Okay, we've spent a large amount of time making the matrix 2DH. All we're trying to do is shave off the unnecessary float multiplications and additions. And I want to actually use them to make our ship move around. Let me uh, control F5 on this game, and you can see that I'm able to fly around just as we did before. Very good. Well, if our math is correct and my logic's correct, we can replace matrix 3D with matrix 2DH, and I'll still be able to fly around the same and all that kind of thing. Now, remember, I was hoping to profile and figure out how much faster is a matrix 2DH compared to a matrix 3DH. However, we've seen that my CPU is not, the high performance counter is not granular enough to catch that. Remember for every, I think it's every thousand clock ticks I get on my CPU, uh, then I actually get a clock tick on the high performance counter. So that's disappointing, but oh well. Matrix 3D, even though it is a matrix 3D, we're only multiplying it against three verts, this is a matter of a few float multiplications and additions. No big deal. We can't profile it. We can't measure it. So taking something that's fast anyway and making it faster, uh, I couldn't measure it before, so how am I going to even measure it more with with faster? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm babbling. Control home. Uh, let's. Uh, first of all, I want the compiler to do some error checking for me. Right? I know I'm building, and I want to replace matrix 2DH with matrix 3dh. So I'm getting rid of the matrix 3dh include completely just so I can have some compiler backup. Control minus, control minus to end up back where we're at. Nice red squigglies here. So I want to replace everywhere I see matrix 3d. I want to replace that with a matrix 2dh. So I already kind of practiced this offline you can see. But matrix 3d, replace it with this. Match case, match whole word. Replace all. Six occurrences replaced. This is shotgun programming at its best. <laughs> Ideally, I'd go through and pick through the file and, and make sure that I'm changing everything and understanding why. And Yeah, that would work. That would work. But eh, whatever. Control-Shift-B, build. Build succeeded. Okay, good. Control-F5. Can I fly? I'm flying. The ship still moves. It's feeling good. Okay, cool. A little discussion I want to take on at this point. I think it's a good time to take on this discussion. Let's go back to Matrix 2DH. Now if you talk to some game programmers, they may say that an affine transformation is a linear combination or a linear transformation followed by a translation. Okay, whoa, uh -huh. let me say that again. An affine transformation is a linear transformation followed by a translation. Now, if you hear a game programmer say that, say something to that effect, don't get all huffy and say you're wrong. But in my mind, they're right, but there's more to it. Right? And let, let me Allow me to explain. You've seen when I was going through those Bill and Ted videos showing affine transformations and that kind of thing, that we took a two-dimensional matrix and we extended it to the 3D to get our translation embedded into that matrix. All right, now let me do just a slight review. Let's go back to 2D here. A, B, C, D. First of all, what is a linear transformation? Well, it basically makes a linear combination. And that word linear, if I use it plenty, you'll probably get confused. Don't get confused. It's not a big deal. We have a matrix here on the left. Here's our vector on the right, the components i and j. I could do x and y if it makes you feel better, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use i and j just because I like to be slightly mathematical. And you remember when we uh, multiply these two, it's the same as saying i times this column plus j times this column. Sorry, that's kind of a weird column, but that's a column. All right, so the word combination comes from the fact that I'm taking i and I'm combining it, this ith element with this vector, with these elements of this vector, and then j with the jth element of this vector, and doing a combination of j with this vector. And so it's kind of cool we can take these scalars inside of a vector and combine them with other vectors and do the addition. All right, remember this is vector addition, and somehow we end up with a new vector. That's really cool. That's the linear combination part, right? Or the linear transformation. Right? We can take a scalar times it by 
by a vector and then add it to another scalar times a vector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you look, we have a lot of linear combinations here going on. All right, look at all these linear combinations. And before I went and made the matrix 2DH class, we had linear combinations out here as well. But the intelligent programmer in me said, you know, all that stuff's a waste. We can get rid of that. All, right, all we're doing is really just adding that translation in. Okay, so when people say it's a linear combination followed by, or a linear transformation followed by a translation, this is how they're looking at it. Here's the linear combination part, and here's the translation. All right, followed by, notice the plus signs here, followed by a translation. All right, but if this is all they understand, they're, they're missing the big picture. The big picture is this is still linear algebra. We are using the third dimension to do a translation in the second dimension, as I've shown in previous videos. Let me bring up matrix 3D H again in line right here. and Let's go down. Here's our original multiplication code. And look at this. All I see right here is a, uh, uh, here's a linear transformation. All this is linear transformation. I don't see followed by a translation anywhere in there. All right, but really it is followed by a translation. Okay, it's just over here. All right, we removed the fluff from this code over here and and uh, got down to the nitty gritty. What's really doing work down in here? But it's still a linear combination or linear transformation. Either way, it's linear transformation. All right, I remember when I first showed affine transformations to a hardcore mathematics friend of mine. Um, he in his mind, which he's right, he says translation is not linear. Translation is not linear. Translation is not linear. And it's not unless you use that extra dimension. Okay, so I took our two-dimensional matrix I had here before A, B, C, and D, and then I threw in translation I, translation J, or translation X and Y, whatever you want, and then here's 0, 0, 1, and I was trying to wrap my head around this concept and I showed this to him and then we have I J and then we you know W okay and he looked at it and he laughed he said oh that's funny that's funny they took translation and they linearized it <laughs> and I looked at him I'm like what <laughs> they linearized it well I, I hope you get it now and I, I understand it now yeah they, they took translation and by using this extra dimension, which we've seen with Bill and Ted, they linearized it right here. All right, so it is a linear transformation. But if you want to look at it as a linear transformation, followed by, here's the followed by part, a translation, then cool. Let me do one last thing before I end this video. Remember, in my GL window, we spent all that time... Uh, we had ship, had ship, position plus op times verts, and op was a two by two matrix, and op did the rotation, and then we added the translation, so we did a linear transformation followed by a translation. Do you remember that? In fact, that's the whole reason why we went to that third dimensional matrix, so we could we could write this more compactly and and do op times verts like that. Uh, but what we really did, and I didn't really tell you this, oops, let's go back to what we were at. What we really did is took this ship position plus, and since we're doing that um, third dimensional thing down to the second dimensional thing, we, we pretty much just put this ship position plus right here and right here. <laughs> Alright, so... Pick your poison. You know, we could leave it like this, but I don't like that. I like the linear algebra way of doing it. I like the more, more mathematical way of doing it, even though I know it's doing the exact same thing in here. It's still, it's, it's nice. It's cool. All right, and then we're going to see when we get to three-dimensional graphics, we'll use the unused elements of our matrices, but uh, I'm probably beating a dead horse here. Let me get back to op times verts. Just make sure this builds still... Build started, build succeeded. Run it. There you go. So hopefully you're more educated now. Yes, 
linear transformation followed by a translation, sure, but really it's just, it, it, it's all a linear transformation once you use that extra dimension.